What's up guys? Happy Friday. Man, I hope you guys had a great week. It was Halloween last week. It was like a marathon. I felt like it never ended, but it was super fun. I got to do fun parties with friends and the kids and all sorts of good stuff. So it was a good time. I hope you guys had a great time as well. I'm so happy that you're here for this video because there's so much to learn in this video. I am going to share how to create, how to convert basically a jean jacket you've got sitting in your closet into one of these really cool Sherpa jean jackets. It's like that faux shearling, super on trend. It's really retro. It's really comfy. It's perfect as we're in fall going into winter, just such a great DIY and it's super easy. I'm going to show you a no sew version and a sewing version. So no matter your skill set, you guys can do this. Um, there's one other thing that I wanted to share with you guys because it's a way for you to make money and I'm super stoked on it. So you know how influencers make a lot of their money through affiliate link? Well, let me, okay, maybe you don't know this. Influencers make a lot of their money through affiliate links. They might use a site like uh, Reward Style, which is invite only. Not everyone has access to it. You have to have like certain, you know, like numbers, uh, social media numbers and stuff. Let's say like this full outfit was from Nordstrom, right? It's not, this is my merch, but still, let's just pretend. I could post a photo on Instagram or a blog post and I could say shop my look. All of the links are affiliate links, which means that if you buy it, I get a commission when you buy it. The average person who is suggesting products to their friends does not have access to that. You're just sharing products because you're a nice person. Until now. Now, you can have access to affiliate links. So there's this amazing company called Chirpiest. Basically, this is how it works. You're gonna use the link below. It's like the invite link into the platform. Totally free, it's always gonna be free. It's not like free for the first month and then it is just free, free, free. You will create yourself an account and then it's an extension that gets added to your browser. Now, it just sits there. You're gonna forget about it. You're gonna open up a website about to do some shopping. You're going to Target. Let's say you're gonna do grocery shopping on Target. All of a sudden, a pop-up, a chirpiest pop-up will come up and it will say, activate cashback. You'll just click activate cashback. Boom, you're done. Now you shop on Target. Like you normally shop on Target for whatever you shop on Target for. You will get cash back on your order. Any site that you are shopping on, as long as the browser is installed, it's just gonna function in the background. It's gonna pop up and give you that cash back. But that's only one element of it, right? That's a way for you to save money. There is also a way for you to make money. Let's say you have a jacket that everybody loves or a dress that you wear to a party. Everyone's like, oh my God, I love that dress. And you would normally just say, oh, thanks, I got it at Nordstrom. Now, instead, you can say, oh, I'll send you a link. You can create your own affiliate link through your chirpiest account and that cash back that they normally offer converts to commission for you. So when your friend buys that dress that you suggested to her, you are going to get a commission from her order. So all you have to do is install the browser and basically that's it. It's gonna do the rest of the work. You make money when you're shopping, you create affiliate links that you can share with everybody and anybody, creating blog posts, whatever you want, make money when other people shop. And there's this really cool thing called shopping boards. So you can go on and create your own shopping board, which is basically like your own curated store. Anytime someone buys something through your shopping board, you make that cash back. Off all of your normal suggestions that you would normally do, you can save money on all of your normal shopping that you would normally do. So it's really, really cool. I cannot recommend it enough. I'm gonna put the link down below. Just click it, create your account, install it, and move on with your life. You're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. Um, I just had to share it because I thought it was super cool. Anyway, let's get into this video because this, as well, is super cool. <laughs> So here is that great $5 jacket that I thrifted. It's a perfect little jacket, kind of cropped, fitted. I love it. I also noticed that the corduroy piece that's all along the neckline seems to have just been added to the top, which means I can very easily seam rip it off. Now, if you're using a jacket that you already own and it doesn't have this, just skip 20 seconds until I'm done. But if you have something where there's a statement, you're just gonna remove it and you can actually use this as your pattern. So I'm able to use this as my pattern, but let's say you're not. This is the collar you're gonna do. All you need is some scrap fabric or pattern paper, uh, wrapping paper, anything you need to create your pattern. Take the collar of your jacket and make sure that you lay it out so it it has its curve. You know, the jacket itself is curved so that when it goes on you, it rolls the collar down. So make sure that you work with the curve and trace the entire thing out. 
When you get to the bottom, you're basically gonna fold that collar back and create a couple of dash lines and connect those dash lines until you have a pattern. Now, obviously you really only need to make half a pattern because you could fold your fabric in half like this and then cut it and you would end up with something perfectly symmetrical. I traced the whole thing for some reason, but I obviously didn't need to. And you can see I traced it slightly uneven. So it actually is much better to only do half, fold it, and then cut it that way. I double checked with the corduroy piece to see how it was and it looked pretty good. So I went and I took my iron, I pressed open all of the seam allowance, laid it on the back side of my Sherpa fabric and I just cut it out. I cut it out with no seam allowance because again, I pressed open those seams and so it's already part of the pattern. Now this is where the Sherpa is gonna go. We want that fuzzy side facing out. So I need to fold everything back. If you are gonna fabric glue it, you will fold back those little angles, I mean the little edge there, and then add your fabric glue to the collar all along the edge, and then you will fold it back and lay it down. Not like I'm doing here, which is just laying it flat. You need to make sure to fold that little piece down so that it's clean finished. Now, if you're gonna sew it, you're gonna actually sew it here so that when it folds down, it will be clean finish. Kind of like when you do a waistband. You sort of fold it upside down so that then when you fold the waistband down, it's clean finished. So I found the center of my collar and I just pinned it upside down onto the collar, right? It looks a little confusing, but basically what you're gonna do is lay it down the way you know you want it, and then from there, flip it up, and then you'll know exactly where to pin and sew. I'm just doing a simple straight stitch all the way across, sewing it to the collar, and look, now when I fold it down, there you go. I've got a perfectly clean finished edge and the top of my Sherpa collar is now attached. Now it's time to work on the sides. You're basically gonna fold it like a present. You're just gonna tuck that excess fabric in and fold it until it's nice and like flush with the edge. You just want a little bit of an overlap because it's a cool detail and you don't wanna see the denim peek out, you wanna see the Sherpa. So you're just gonna lay that down till it's nice and even, use your fingers to manipulate it and pin it into place. Again, you see how I'm folding it under and pinning it? If you were fabric gluing it, you would be folding it under, adding your glue and then pushing it down into that glue. Now it's time to actually sew it down. I'm gonna do a looser stitch on this because I don't wanna actually see the indentation of the stitch line in the Sherpa. You obviously don't have to worry about that with the top piece because the stitch was hidden inside, but these are top stitched. So a loose stitch will allow you to kind of use your fingernail. You can almost scratch at the seam and it will fluff up and hide the stitch line. Now in these little corners, this is an area where there's so many layers of denim that are folded into the corner seam that it's impossible to sew through. So you can either use fabric glue like I'm using now, or if you use a needle and thread, you can just pick up a couple of threads of the denim and tack down the Sherpa into those corners, but you won't be able to get your needle through it. It'll snap and break in two seconds. Now, here is where some of the um, sort of trial and error occurred. This is what I wanna share with you. I started working on multiple design ideas because I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do. I didn't have like a very direct inspo I was working off of. I just knew that I wanted to create a jacket that I loved. So first thing I thought is I would do this sort of cuff all the way around the bottom. I did the exact same thing. I created my pattern based off of my jacket. I cut it out. You lay it flat and flip it upside down. I will stitch everything down right there so that then I can fold it and it will be clean finished. Started off doing again the same thing. I'm sewing from the backside so that it's all gonna be hidden and then I will fold it over. Now, you're gonna see as I'm going, I share with you some of the ideas I had that I then changed my mind and I didn't end up doing it this way. Here's the, the cuff. Let's say you decided to do the cuff, right? You're gonna stitch it, you're gonna fold it down. You're gonna do the same thing on the sides, a sort of little present wrapping on the sides, tack it down, use glue where you need to, use a needle and thread where you need to, and then sew the bottom. Now, I started playing around with the idea of also adding these little lines. So I had some wide ones, some thin ones. I was just looking at it. And the bottom piece looked like a Santa jacket or like an elf jacket or something. It was just really distracting and I didn't like it. So I ended up seam ripping open the sides and then just yanking the entire thing off and just taking it off. I just did not like the way it looked. So then I thought, okay, maybe I'll do the like front sort of like shoulder panel piece and then the yoke that goes across the back. So in order to do that, if you decide you wanna do it, I grab some of my denim and I'm using my scissors pushing against the seams. See how exact I am on that seam? That's because I'm using my scissors and I'm running them along the seams. I can actually feel it underneath the fabric. So this is one way of creating a pattern without taking apart your existing piece. Use the seams, 
feel for them with your scissors and cut the pieces while it's pinned to your item. And there you go. I've got two of those front pieces and one of the back piece. Now again, because I cut it exact, there was no seam allowance, so I'm cutting it with about a half an inch seam allowance. I will cut one of these right side up, then for the other side of my jacket, I'll take the pattern piece, I will flip it upside down so it mirrors itself and I will cut out the next piece. Now it was time to put it on my jacket. I pinned it, I played with it, I looked at it, I tried it on and I just wasn't liking it. I don't know, I just, I could tell him like, this isn't something I would buy in a store. If I'm not gonna buy it in a store, then I'm not gonna take my time making it. I want this to be something that I love and I wasn't loving it. So I came up with a solution and this is the final version that I make. We are back to the place where I just have my collar. I decided to line this center piece. So you see that denim piece that's on the inside. I did the same technique to sort of rub off the pattern. I cut out two pieces in the Sherpa and I am now pinning it directly to my jacket. So when I wear my jacket, it's gonna look like the collar connects all the way down to the center front where the zipper is. And it'll look like one consistent piece. So I'm pinning everything into place and then I will go over and sew it. Now that piece where the collar connects to the new piece I'm adding, I actually decide to hand sew this and you'll see why in just a second. This is kind of what it's gonna look like. So there you can see I'm hand sewing. That piece where those two pieces come together, I really wanted to perfect it. Sometimes using a needle and thread is much easier because with every single stitch, you can manipulate and move and tweak and adjust everything exactly where you want it. This allowed me to pull the two pieces of fabric together perfectly. See that? You can't see anything. It looks really great. It kind of feels like one piece. You're not seeing any denim. You're not seeing any stitches. So I felt that that was the right move. Now for this part though, I'm stitching it directly onto the zipper. So right now I switched my thread for a navy blue on the front and my um, bobbin thread is white. That way I could stitch with the navy blue going onto the zipper and the white on the bottom. Again, everything else is just getting stitched on just like normal. We've gone through this a little bit now so you guys get the sense of it. But basically you're just gonna be tacking down each piece wherever you decide you want it. Now these are the long pieces, the sort of stripes that go down the sleeve. I knew that I was not gonna be able to sew it entirely into the sleeve because the sleeve is really narrow and I wouldn't be able to get my sewing machine all the way down. So what I did is I took the two pieces, which were four inches, and I just hemmed both sides so that they were clean finished. I pinned them to my jacket and now I'm starting at the shoulder and I'm gonna stitch it down. It's easy here, the shoulder is easy, I've got plenty of room. But as I start working my way down into the sleeve, it starts getting harder and harder. I hate that my camera, by the way, like auto focuses on my head when I sew. I need to move the camera. Anyway, I was only able to get about halfway down with the sewing machine. The rest of it, you're either gonna add the fabric glue or you're gonna hand sew it. I just am not able to get my sewing machine into that space, so you're just gonna do a combination of the both. But I've got these two sort of racing stripes down the sleeve and the collar in the center. It is perfect. I am obsessed with the final design of this jacket. I hope you guys are gonna do this one. Okay, that's it. I love the way this jacket came out. I'm actually gonna do something different today. My brother, who normally shoots all of my like, awkward model footage in the front yard uh, was unavailable. So I'm actually going to shoot it in my room right now and I'm gonna show you a few different outfits you could make with this jacket. So not only will I show you how the jacket came out but I'll also do a little styling sesh that maybe gives you a little inspo um, for your own Sherpa jacket. Thank you for being here. Reminder guys, that chirpiest link is down below. You can start to save money and earn money anytime you are suggesting products or shopping. It's such a cool tool so I hope that you'll use it. Link is below. And if you're brand new, I hope you subscribed. I do great DIY content every single Friday with shorts on Sundays and I would love for you to uh, to join the fam. So thanks everybody. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you next week. Yeah. There's no